Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good morning. So happy to see you all on this day. Um, just a little housekeeping announcement. Our work has begun in the parish house on the bathroom. They're both, um, uh, the upstairs two are ripped out as well as the one downstairs that we're preparing for our Marines Haven guests. So that means the bathroom here is the little teeny tiny one off of the sacristy, but you're all welcome to it. So just remember that for the next couple weeks, I think that's the way it's gonna be. Our uh, opening hymn is at the top of page one in your bulletin. If you would all please stand and join our choir and singing. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Sirach. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it, and do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice. For the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. He will not or ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. The word of the Lord. God. Let's read together Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. For my heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sorrow of his home to our house, and the swallow and nest which he may lay around. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house, for they will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in his honor. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first offense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far out, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say, and please keep me out of your way. Amen. Please, everyone be seated. This week's parable is a pair with last week's parable, and they have a lot in common. If you remember last week, it was all about the widow who persevered with the judge. She was relentless in her seeking of justice and help from the judge, who was not a righteous man, who did not fear God, in fact, did not fear anyone. But he did the right thing because she was persistent and would not leave him alone. You had a contradiction between two individuals, the persistent and righteous widow and the unrighteous judge who somehow had been elevated high in society. This week's parable is similar in that we have two individuals here who have come forward in Jesus' story. One, a lowly tax collector, the lowest of anyone in society. You see, for you see why, This tax collector worked for the Romans, an occupying nation in Palestine. And his job was not just to receive your checks in the mail or a little money from a business. No, no. His job was to go door to door, to see all that you had, to evaluate what you were worth, and then to make you pay it make you pay a portion of that to the Roman government. And by the way, if he could get a little more out of you, he got to keep that in his pocket. So tax collectors weren't just the dregs of society, they were loathed by the populace. But Pharisees, who we often set up as examples today as people not to emulate, 
Well, in Jesus's day, they were the highest of the high. They were the leaders of the religious class within Judaism. Highly respected, highly regarded, and highly emulated in the society. So you have the Pharisees up here and the tax collector way down there. And in comes Jesus telling a story where he's going to flip that balance yet again. Before this reading, when people would pray, they would always look heavenward. If you look at mosaics from the time, any artwork of the time, the stance was always like this as you prayed. And that is what this Pharisee is doing, looking heavenward. He has nothing to be ashamed of in his mind. He's done it all. And he wants everyone to see that he's done all these good things. The tax collector has his head bowed. He is ashamed of all that he has done. And he calls himself a sinner. It's actually from this reading in Luke that we get the stance that we follow every day. You probably didn't realize that. When we pray, most often people bow their heads. And it's because of this humble tax collector. Now the Pharisee gives a list of all the great things he's done. How he fasts, how he comes to temple regularly, and most importantly, how he gives a tenth of his income to the running of the temple. And he does so so everyone sees and hears and admires him for his accomplishments towards God and the church. The tax collector instead quietly confesses all of his sins to God. He realizes that God knows already what he has done and what is in his heart. The tax collector's prayer is the kind of prayer that I hope that we will all emulate. It is a humble and quiet prayer. And I dare say we emulate it with our own confessional. In just less than five minutes, I will invite you all to humbly confess your sins before God and your neighbor. You will pull down the kneelers and as you are able, you will get on your knees and bow your head and quietly recite the words that you do every single week when you're in church. And you are following the example of the tax collector, not the highly regarded Pharisee. In our Lord's world, the things that this world says is important, he points out constantly, they are not. The things that we store up are not important to God. It's how we use them in his service and how we recognize how much we rely on him that is important. So as you leave today, as you go out in the world to pray again, and I hope you do, you shouldn't save it all up for Sunday. <laughs> I hope that you will remember this humble tax collector who knows that he is a sinner just as surely as you and I are and that we are beholden to God for literally everything and tell him so. Amen. Amen. If you would all please stand as you're able and turning to page five in our bulletin, join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation.
tribulation, beginning now and from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord, and the Virgin Mary, and the same man. For our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this village of Bridgehampton, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the people of Ukraine and the swift end of the war there, we pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of St. Anne and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all in our life to Christ our God. To be the Lord our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, I have the peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins against God and our people. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in all our word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. <laughs> Y'all come on back and have a seat. I'm delighted to see you all here. It's great. Um, last week was our big Love is in the Air uh, service, and it was a, a huge success by any standards. Um, it was in, uh, I, I linked it, uh, the service, as I always do, with the newsletter on Wednesday. Uh, so if you weren't with us last week, I, I hope that you'll take a moment and watch it, because it was a lot of fun, and a lot of worshiping went on, and we raised the roof off this place. So um, uh, take some time, and if you, don't, uh, if you don't receive our newsletter, speak to me uh, at the end of the service, and I'll make sure you uh, get that link so that you can find it and watch that. Uh, stewardship is going on. I promised last week I thought the letters uh, for stewardship would go out, but we had a uh, copier meltdown, complete and utter meltdown. Um, uh, so uh, they're going out this week. So um, I hope that you will uh, prayerfully uh, consider all the blessings that God has given you and the portion that he is calling you to give back to St. Anne's so that we can continue our ministries and indeed grow our ministries uh, here at St. Anne's in the coming year. Uh, the blessing box, um, the red wagon is going to come up in a moment. You guys know the drill. Um, we collect groceries in the red and the wagon we bless it uh here shortly and then during the week jen and i are taking the food out and filling the blessing blessing box every day and we do it every day because that food is turning over all the time there are hungry people in the hamptons believe it or not um uh, that are living amongst us and don't have enough so when you can contribute to that i ask that you bring that with you on sunday so that it can get properly blessed Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the bounty brought forth today. For people who do not have enough to eat, we pray that you will put this food to their use and them to your service. All this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. This is the Lord's table, and everyone is welcome to receive communion from it. I have gluten-free wafers. Just let me know if you would like one. And if you would prefer to come to the rail for a blessing, just cross your arms like this, and I will be happy to give you one. And also, we continue to serve the communion wine in the small cups. After you have had your wine, if you will take the cups with you and go down the sides, there's waste cans waiting for you to deposit them there. Our service continues in the bulletin at the top of page 9. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophet, and above all, and the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Anne and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found at the top of page 13 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. So send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, to risk something big for something good, and the grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And now, my friends, go in peace to follow the good road. And may God's blessings be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is also on page 13. If you'll remain standing and join our choir and sing. <laughs>